Okay, so I wanted to do a little overview of the differences between ischemia and infarction because this was a little convoluted to me uh, when I was a first year, the differences and subtleties between these two terms. So we're going to use myocardial infarction, uh, which is a fancy way to say a heart attack, as our example. And here I have a drawing of the heart, and these are the coronary arteries feeding the tissues of the heart. And I don't know why, but I thought it was really interesting how the heart, even though it is full of blood and is constantly pumping blood out to the rest of the body via the aorta here, that it actually doesn't get its nutrients and oxygen from that source of blood. But the heart actually has to pump blood to itself via the, these coronary arteries. And it's the blockage of these arteries that leads to a, quote, heart attack. So over here, I have an example of a coronary artery. And here's the cross section of the artery. And for a variety of reasons, various substances like fat and cholesterol will build up on the walls of these coronary arteries and the rest of the arteries in the body. But we're just talking about the coronary arteries for now. Creating this plaque, which is called atherosclerosis. And as you can see, this leads to narrowing of the arteries and a decrease in blood flow to a particular region of the heart. So any decrease in blood flow to a particular tissue is just called hypoperfusion, generically speaking. And if this is prolonged for a certain amount of time and tissues become deprived of the necessary glucose and oxygen to carry out their metabolic processes, then this leads to ischemia. And then if this is further prolonged, then you have death of the tissue and that is called infarction. So here you have this progression from hypoperfusion, which then can progress to ischemia of the tissue and then further progress along to death or infarction of the tissue. The key difference between ischemia and infarction is that ischemic changes are reversible. So let's go back to this person with a partially obstructed coronary artery. At rest, they may be asymptomatic and feel nothing at all, but if they were to get up and try to walk a flight of stairs, then their oxygen demand increases and their heart starts to pump harder to try to meet that demand and they might ex then start to experience ischemic changes to their cardiac tissue and chest pain. Now, if this same coronary artery were to become almost or completely blocked, say there is further atherosclerosis buildup and then you were to have formation of a thrombus here or a blood clot, then in only a matter of minutes, the tissue that this artery perfuses will become infarcted and die. So any tissue organ in the body can experience ischemic changes and then become infarcted, not only by thrombus formation, which I just described with this coronary artery example, but also with the lodging of an embolus, which is often the case for stroke patients. Say when an atherosclerotic plaque breaks off of one of the carotid arteries in the neck and then propagates to a cerebral artery, cutting off blood supply to all the brain tissue downstream from the artery. So this would be an example of ischemic stroke. So hopefully this helps you to delineate the differences between ischemia and infarction, which is a very important basic pathophysiological concept to nail down in the beginning.